Right Network. Mobilizing, countering the left, energizing the right. New Right Network, home of the New Right Movement. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to New Right Network's original series, Smith TV. Your host, Brian Smith, giving you all the breaking news, wrapping it all up, making sense of it, exposing the fake news, and giving you the real news. Uh, today, Wednesday Wisdom, a Wednesday Motivation. We've got some breaking news that came out just this uh, early, early afternoon, and I kind of had to change things up a little bit and change it around. We've got now hashtag Roe v. Wade trending, uh, Wednesday Wisdom. Folks, it's all about abortion. To the left, it is all about abortion. They've got to hold on to it. They've got to keep it. They've got to have it. It's absolute control of women. It's just absolute control, and you've got the evilness of these uh, these abortion doctors that take the money to the tens of billions and billions of dollars a year. It is a huge uh, industry, and it's just one awful industry. Uh, we'll get into what just happened, folks. Um, we've got conservative states fighting back against states like New York, uh, fighting back against uh, the, the 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 evils of the governor of Virginia, Northam, just. Awful, awful, evil. I mean, it's pure evilness. And um, we'll get in some statistics, some of the videos, some things. Just a recap of some of the stuff. For those of you on the show, you guys are in lockstep with me. You, you and I, we're both on the same page. So I know I'm preaching to the choir. But for someone who is new to the show, um, I am a Christian, first and foremost. And I want to say to you and everyone out there, uh, it, any mother, any woman, uh, 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 a father, a husband that has lost a child, uh, we pray for you and pray for your comfort. Uh, for anybody out there that has actually gone through with an abortion, we pray for your recovery as well. Uh, we open up our arms to bring you in. Uh, Christ has already given his life on the cross. The forgiveness is already there for you. Uh, as Christians, we should reach out to everyone. I spoke about this about yesterday, even Muslims. Reach out to everyone to show everyone who Christ is and that Christ has forgiven you already. Don't, don't bear the burden. Don't, don't keep the guilt inside. Don't keep the pain inside. God's already forgiven you. So you got to forgive yourself and you got to move on. So as a Christian, we open our arms up to those uh, who have gone through difficult times, uh, tough situations, uh, uh, w- whatever the case may be. Uh, we're not here to judge you. Even in the Bible, it says we're not even capable of judging ourselves. So with that being said, we'll get into a lot of stuff today. It's going to be a heavy one. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do too much. I, we'll get through it. We'll get through it, guys. Hang in there with me. Uh, a lot of breaking news uh, over the over the night and in the morning with Spygate, uh, Barr, Huber, Horowitz, and now we got Durham. Uh, big, big news with Durham. It's very, very exciting. Uh, moving forward with all of this, Joe De, De, De Geneva, uh making some very, very bold predictions. And also Trump had a big, giant Trump rally. I mean, what other, what other size rally would it be other than big? I, that's just what it is. Everybody coming out to see Trump, to listen to him speak, uh, talking about jobs and workers and all kinds of great things with America, the American economy, the uh, the energy sector with America and the fuel and fossil fuels, clean clean coal and natural gas and, and America becoming a powerhouse, a force to reckon with. And if we got time, we'll get into some of the Democrats and their hypocrisy. I don't know if we'll get get to Islam and illegal immigration. Maybe we'll skip Islam for today, man. Abortion and Islam and illegal immigration all in the same day. Whew, that's heavy. That's real heavy. <clears throat> so maybe we'll kind of back off that for a little bit. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, and again, it's uh, just a little bit of this illegal immigration. For those of you who live out in California, my heart breaks for you. I, it truly does. My heart goes out to every single one of you out there in California. Uh, the governor is just a really, really bad, when you say a bad governor, just a really bad governor. And this at loves underscore NRA, OMG, yesterday rebuking uh, real Donald Trump and his efforts to banish criminal illegals from our country. Governor of California, Gavin Newsom, pardons refugees facing deportation. Newsom and his aunt, uh, Speaker Pelosi, Need to be deported immediately. This was by the L.A. Times. 
So, uh, there's a good buddy Larry Elder out there in California on the radio. Larry Elder said this. He said, you know, it's amazing. Uh, you cheat to get into college and, and you go to jail, you get prosecuted and thrown, probably thrown in prison for it. But, uh, you break the law, you illegally come across the border and you get free tuition to college. How's that work? Something's wrong with you Democrats. There's something seriously wrong with you. Uh, so I, <laughs> I feel for you guys out there in California. I really, really, truly do. And this at CS00582SC, Cindy Sees Truth, at Lindsey Graham, to present immigration reform plan tomorrow. Stay woke, people. Why are we going to have a million people from Central America? Why is it doubling? Because words out on the street in Central America, if you bring a minor child with you to America, we can only hold a minor child for 20 days. We, we release everybody, including the adults. They never show up for the hearing because it's three years from now. We also, it's been found out in Central America, if you ask for asylum, nobody's trying not to get caught. They're going to a border agent, border patrol agent, saying, I want asylum. The hearings are two, three, four years down the road. Nobody ever shows up for the hearing. So we're going to change the asylum law that you have to apply in the country where you live or Mexico, we're going to stop Central American applications being made at the border because we don't have enough judges uh, for hearing dates. We're going to go to 100 days. We can hold minor children for 100 days so that we can actually process the entire family without letting them go. We're going to increase judges by 500. we got almost 900,000 backlog of asylum claims. We're going to wipe out the backlog. you got to apply for asylum where you live or in Mexico, no longer from the United States. And if you're an unaccompanied minor, we're going to send you back to Central America as if you lived in Mexico, which would be a change in our laws. This should stop 90% of the legal immigration from Central America. Lindsey Graham getting hot and heavy, looking like he's really trying to make a difference. Uh, God bless him. I really hope he can push that bill through. Uh, I hope, seriously, change the asylum laws, change the situation that we got down there on the border. And again, just to reiterate, uh, people are being told, you come to the border of, of America with a child, you're in. You're in like Flynn. Whole families. We've seen whole families show up at the border. Because they were told the entire family could get jobs and they could work and they're all in. And we absolutely need to change the way that this is done and um, stop the voting block of the Democrat Party. I mean, it's literally why they come up here, uh, why the Democrats want them to come up here is because that's their new voter base. So frustrating, so frustrating. All right, folks, let's just get into the big, big, big and heavy, the uh, abortion topic and the reason why it is trending today. This at Life News HQ, lifenews.com. They actually follow us on the show. So uh, thank you very much, Life News HQ, uh, for the follow. We follow back. They just tweeted out, the Alabama legislator just passed a bill to ban abortions. It would make an abortion, an attempted abortion, a felony, and abortionists would go to prison for 10 to 99 years for killing an unborn baby in an abortion. And this being reported on their actual website, lifenews.com. Amidst multiple hours of debate after 4 p.m., the Senate rejected an amendment that would have added exceptions for rape and incest by a 21 to 11 vote. This means that the Senate passed the bill cleanly, exactly as it was passed by the House. HB 314 bans all abortions except when the life of the mother is in danger. The legislation criminalizes performing abortions with performing an abortion become a class A felony and attempting to perform an abortion becoming a class C felony. This is incredible news. This is incredible news for those that uh, have never been given the opportunity to live. Uh, seriously, think about it, guys. And, and uh, you all know the talking points. You all know the, the, the examples and the details. When the sperm and the egg unite, instantly the DNA becomes completely different than the mother's DNA, making it completely different. Just as if a turkey was in the oven. The turkey is not part of the oven. Uh, just as if, uh, you know, you, you poured water into a cup. The water's inside the cup. It's not part of the cup. The baby is at conception. A completely different Human being growing in the womb, we have technology to uh, to be able to detect at six weeks of inception a heartbeat. 
And we've seen all the details. We've seen what the Democrats would would allow to do and what want to do. And and uh, Governor Northam saying that you know when when the baby comes out of the womb, then you know the doctor and the mother can will we'll keep the baby comfortable. Doctor and mother can decide on. No man, that's murder. That's flat out murder. And we do not regard this in our society. A uh, hundred years from now, 200 years from now, people are going to look back at our society and at the Democrat Party that advocates for abortion and just be dumbfounded, completely dumbfounded th- at how they wanted to take uh, uh, ripping the babies out of the wombs, promoting that, getting women to to get pregnant by promoting them getting on birth control. It's a proven fact that uh, young girls who decide to go to Planned Parenthood get on birth control because it's free or uh, get condoms because they're free. First off, number one, they start having more promiscuous sex. And I I tell my daughters, every time you have sex, 100% of the time, there's a 100% chance you're going to get pregnant. There's a 100% chance every time you have have sex, protected sex, unprotected, whatever you think you've got protection, 100% of the time that you have sex, there's a 100% chance that you could get pregnant. It's a flat out fact. Planned Parent knows it, and they know that girls actually become uh, more increasingly active sexually when they get on birth control, and more often than not, actually become pregnant. Whereas if they weren't taking the pill or they didn't have access to the condoms, uh, they wouldn't be having promiscuous sex. The billion dollar industry that is Planned Parenthood. What an evil, evil, evil industry. And uh, flip the script, we've got uh, crazy, crazy. Uh, left wing news, vice news, news.vice.com. I don't go there. I did. I do this for you. Don't go there. No reason for that. Now they've turned it into race. It's about racism now. Not only is it about abortion, but it's now about racism. Uh, by David Gilbert, uh, wrote this article. The title of the article, 25 white Republican men just voted to ban abortion in Alabama. Racist and a, a big. <laughs> Sexist. 25 white Republican men voted to ban abortion. So let's go straight for racism. Let's go straight for sexism. It's men trying to take a... No, it's men trying to prevent these babies from being murdered. It is complete and total murder. And again, I'd start off the show if you just joined in. Um, I, I'm a Christian. Um, Left uh, left the church back in my 20s, in my early 30s. I came back to the church. I, I pretty much consider myself a, a born-again Christian, if you will, uh, more into the Bible, more into uh, trying to develop a, a better relationship with Christ and with the, at the church that we're at now. I've learned more about uh, Christ's relationship in the Bible in the last five years than I have in the last, uh, or in the first 15 to 20 years uh, that I was going to church as a kid. But here's what I know to be a fact. I know that the church is the hospital for your soul as the hospital for broken bones is. You go to the hospital for a broken bone when your soul is broken and you're depressed and you're sad and you're upset and, and your soul is just breaking apart and you can't take it anymore. And the pressure and the guilt, all of that's coming down. That's where you need to go to church to get fixed, to get healed. Uh, Christ already gave himself on the cross. You're already forgiven. Whatever you do tomorrow, 10 years from now, and it's not being a hypocrite. I'm not saying that. We try to become better and try to try to not do those things anymore. But as human, as part of the flesh, uh, we're guilt-ridden with sin, which is sin. It's just in our DNA. And Christ has already died on the cross for that sin. So stop feeling guilty. Leave it go. Let it go. It's not about the guilt. And Christians, we need to open our arms up and we need to embrace these young women. We need to take care of them. We need to, uh, uh, you know, raise them up and, and give them some kind of a security and, and a emotional security. And let them know that the the church is there for you. Um, I know at our church, whenever someone has a baby in the church, we take turns for a couple, like every night for a couple of weeks, we take turns uh, making food for that family. And we deliver that food to that family for the first few weeks 
that um, that they're home with their newborn baby. And it's just those kinds of things that Christians need to be doing. I know my stepmother uh, works with an outreach program that helps young mothers and young teens that become pregnant to make that choice to keep the baby. Make that choice and keep the baby. Uh, Christians reaching out, uh, putting together programs to help support these young women. And again, this this past week on Mother's Day, I, I mentioned it on Monday, but I'll mention it again, and I put the link in the description below. And uh, our church had a uh, very unusual service. It was Mother's Day service, and the sermon was about abortion. And but he came full circle, came all the way back around, came full circle, and made complete sense of it. Uh, there are mothers out there that have children now. That, that may have had, and he even mentions a, a woman, but not by name, but mentions a woman in the church that serves for the church and is a part of the church and, and helps out in the church, and that uh, she confided in him one time that back when she was in college, uh, she had had an abortion. But now, she, since then, she's had three and four children and carries that weight and that guilt with her. And he tell, just like I'm telling you, you need to let that go. Let that, you've already been forgiven. Forgive yourself. You've already been forgiven. Let that go and move on. So, and he talked a lot about Psalms 106, talked about God uh, and his opinion of abortion, which you and I, you know, we already know God is 100% against abortion. It is life. Uh, he also mentions uh, miscarriages. And when women have miscarriages, uh, who knows? I can't explain it. He can't explain it. The pastor can't explain it. I, I don't know. God has something to do with everything. But as he says, and I agree with him, uh, that if you've had a baby, if you've carried a baby and had had a miscarriage and never had carried one full term, you are considered a mother. All tens and purposes, you are considered a mother because you had a baby. It just did not um, develop to become uh, uh, older. And that's the difference. The difference between a baby and a womb and you and I right here is place and time. You and I are right here. The baby's in the womb. The baby's little. I'm big. That's the only difference. And our DNA is completely different from our parents uh, as the baby is uh, growing in the womb. 48%, here's some statistics real fast. 48% are pro-choice in America and 48% are pro-life. We are completely split down the middle and the Democrat Party continues to put, I blame this wholeheartedly, blame this on the Democrat Party. They continue to uh, prop up Planned Parenthood, continue to pay them the tunes of billions of dollars a year through uh, government funds, government money. Or court, judge ruled that Texas, state of Texas, didn't have to fund Planned Parenthood anymore. Uh, Ohio uh, passed the heartbeat bill, Ohio stopping to pay in Planned Parenthood as well. Some of these states are really starting to fight back about against this evilness. Um, in 1980, one third of uh, pregnant women ended in abortion. Uh, the cost of abortion nowadays is about 500 bucks. iPhone 10 costs more than an abortion. 93% uh, happens at the walk-in clinics like Planned Parenthood. And no, call up Planned Parenthood and ask them if you get a mammogram. No, that don't work. They don't do that there. They don't do that. They don't do mammograms. Pap smears, maybe. No, the, the, the biggest thing is abortions. Uh, 98% have nothing to do with health issues. 98% of abortions have nothing to do with health issues. One of the biggest arguments of pro-abortion activists is that abortion is medically necessary. What's your position on that? We hear all the time how abortion, is, including especially late-term abortion, is necessary to save women's lives. Nothing could be further from the truth. I spent nine years working at a tertiary medical center. I mean, there are only certain hospitals in the country that are designated to take care of the really, really high-risk pregnancies. It's, you don't want to duplicate the effort. It's expensive. So we would these hospitals get referrals from the surrounding area. And Albany Medical Center in Albany, New York, where I worked, was one of them. I was faculty at the hospital for nine years. And I saw hundreds of cases of really severe pregnancy complications, cancers, heart disease, intractable diabetes, out of control, toxemia, pregnancy, out of control. And I saved, in, the, in those nine years, I saved hundreds 
of women from life-threatening pregnancies. And I did that by delivering them, by ending their pregnancy by delivery, either induction of labor or cesarean section. Delivering the baby. Delivering the baby. And I always tell people, in all of those years, the numbers of the number of babies that I had to, that I was obligated to deliberately kill in the process was zero. None. And I'll give you an example. The key point about late term abortion that so many people miss is that it takes days to prepare the cervix. This is not a natural situation by any stretch. If you're going to dilate the cervix sufficiently, that starts off essentially as a pinpoint large enough to dismember or tear apart a baby this big, that cervix has to be dilated, and that can take anywhere from 24 to 72 hours, and especially when you're talking about later-term pregnancies. Most life-threatening situations, the vast, vast majority of life-threatening situations in pregnancy are not going to arise until 24, 25, 26 weeks of pregnancy and higher. And when you're talking about that, you're talking about abortion procedures that take two and three days to prepare the cervix. And I'll give you a classic example. This is a real case. Um, a lady came to the hospital at 27 weeks of pregnancy with severe toxemia. Her blood pressure, you know, a normal blood pressure is about 120 over 80. Her blood pressure was 220 over 160. Okay, this lady would literally be minutes or hours away from a stroke. What do you do in a situation like that? We stabilized her, brought her back, did a cesarean section, had her delivered within an hour of arriving at the hospital. She and her baby did just fine. Mm -hmm. now, of, now, let's say we wanted to use abortion to save her life. Okay, If with that kind of blood pressure and that kind of problem, if we waited two to three days to get her cervix prepared, she would never make it. She would have been dead. There you have it, folks. Deliver the deliver the baby to save the mother. Deliver the baby to save the mother. Um, in the last 40 years, Planned Parenthood and all these other abortion mills, since Roe v. Wade, 61 million babies have been aborted in the last 40 years. And for those of you who've been on the show uh, for as long as uh, we've been doing this since uh, 2014, uh, you've heard my story before. I was born in June of 1973. Uh, June, uh, J January of 1973, Roe v. Wade was passed. Uh, the 14, 15 year old woman had the opportunity in June of 1973 to have an abortion and I would never have been born. Um, there are a lot of stories out there, folks, a lot of stories out there. And uh, a good point that my pastor makes, uh, in the 1980s, if you were having babies in the 1980s or, you know, people that were having abortions in the 1980s and you're complaining about the state of affairs that we live in today, a third of those babies born and or, uh, a third of those pregnancies in the 1980s were terminated through abortion. So a third of them didn't even have the possibility of making a difference in the lives of people today. It's just, just it's heart wrenching to see how all this kind of plays out, and it's really, really difficult with the uh, the Democrats beholden and convincing these young girls, teenagers, and twenties that um, that it's your right, and a man has no right to your baby, although he uh, was half of it, he was half of that miracle of God. So we have Georgia stepping up to the plate at Barnett twenty, Todd. Trumplican Todd, red pilled, sorry, Holly weird leftist, Georgia morals and innocent lives are not for sale. God bless Georgia and its great governor Kemp. Georgia governor dismisses Hollywood's threat on the eve of pro-life heartbeat bill in signing. We cannot change our values of who we are for money. And if you know, uh, Alyssa Milano is still uh, filming her, her movie in Georgia, so she'll get her money first and then Ah, that'd be it. And then she'll go back and forget all about it. And real quick, this is a uh, video on the YouTubes where a baby was born premature, 26 weeks premature. Uh, the baby has survived. The baby is uh, looks uh, healthy and continuing to thrive. 
and be the baby that it is. There's Papa. Got to be so proud. So proud. Miracles. Do- and my cousin, his uh, his wife had a very difficult pregnancy. And I believe the baby was born four months too early, three months too early. And it was extremely, it, it, was, it was an emergency, emergency situation to where she was literally in the, just bad. It was, it was bad, bad, bad. And they called the ambulance and a rush her to the hospital in the hospital for an extremely long time. Uh, the, the very tiny little baby, uh, spent months and months and months in the hospital. Bill was up over a million dollars. Thank goodness for, uh, healthcare and insurance. And, uh, fast forward to today. She's the same age as my son. I just bouncing baby girl, just happy, uh, loving, energetic. Just tremendous what um, what the what the human bodies are able to to overcome. This by Wikipedia, according to studies between 03 and 05, 20% of babies born at 24 weeks survive. While at 25 weeks, one extra week, 50 to 70% of babies survive. So at at, at uh, 24 weeks. 20% survive at 25 weeks, 50 to 70% survive. And at 26 to 27 weeks, just another week, 90% of the babies survive. At 26 to 27 weeks, 90% of the babies survive. There's just no question about it, folks. We've got to continue to support young women continue to speak out and continue to uh, uh, forgive and forgiveness, continue to be that that voice um, and just uh, that Christian voice and continue to uh, preach love and not hate. Uh, don't judge. Folks, let's stop. We've got to stop judging other people. Truly stop judging people that make uh, mistakes in their lives or, or commit sin because we all commit sin, but we've got to remember that Christ has died on the cross for us, and that has been paid. That bill has been paid. Uh, so when you get to heaven and uh, St. Peter's at the gate and says, why should you be here? Look around and say, hey, I'm looking for Christ. He said he'd meet me up here. He's the one with my ticket. That's all you need, folks. I'm telling you, that's all you need. Um, so with that being said, let's jump into this real quick. Uh, oh, well, we're kind of halfway through the show, and then I'll I'll, I'll buzz through this real fast. Just some of the updates of the things that are going on with the Spygate, Barr, Huber, Horowitz, and Durham. Uh, I complained about uh, Barr, or complained about Huber and Horowitz yesterday. Uh, still, compl- still complaining a little bit, but I, I've got some updates on what's going on with them. And this by Jordan underscore Sather underscore U.S. Attorney John Huber in Utah is no longer working on Russia in issues. Huber, review of other issues related to Hillary Clinton and the Clinton Foundation, is nearing completion, sources said. This by CNN.com. So whether the fake news is fake news or not, CNN.com does accidentally put out real news every once in a while. It's it's possible. It does happen. So uh, they're reporting from sources that Huber is now shifting to Clinton and the Clinton email scandal. If I was Hillary Clinton, the audacity for what? But if I was Hillary Clinton, I would be absolutely scared to death because of what's coming. It's called Operation Boomerang. <laughs> it's it's what comes around, goes around, and it's coming back at you guys. It's coming back at you hard. Operation Boomerang. And this at John McGeever 70. A very, very good one to follow. A lot of great news. A great writer. Uh, I follow him. He follows me as well. Just great stuff coming out of John McGeever 70. Boom. Joe DeGeneva, for the first time, I believe these guys are going to jail. Brennan and Comey need five lawyers each. Joe DeGeneva, Durham's been working for a couple of months. The bottom line is this is now big time. This is posted up by James Hoff from the Gateway Pundit. James Comey, Brennan, and Clapper have said to themselves, which one of us is going to pay the bar bill? The bar bill is coming due. And Durham's appointment means that 
the already occurred meetings between the attorney general, the CIA director, and the director of national intelligence have now focused on a laser that the core of this conspiracy began with John Brennan and ends with John Brennan in London and D.C. and the Democratic National Committee. This is very serious business. And for the first time, I now believe that some of these guys are going to go to prison. It went through a rigorous due process within the Department of Justice, the FBI. It was approved by the FISA court. It went through all of those steps. What they're trying to do is to uncover something that they will misrepresent as being part of this deep state effort to try to undermine Donald Trump's election. Heard it. No, he used the term uh, misrepresent. The only misrepresentation is what they did with the, with the dossier in front of the FISA court where they didn't tell the court who paid for the document. They didn't tell the court that the guy who wrote it Christopher Steele was desperate. How serious to stop is Trump. this tonight? I mean, this, the other networks are poo pooing this no, thing. No, no, this this is, is fantasy land for conservatives. I think this is very serious. I think it's Bill Barr doing what he said. Remember, when he was in front of the Senate Finance Committee four weeks ago, he said he was serious about putting together a team to get to the bottom of this. He said there was a four key things. There was a failure of leadership at the upper echelon of the FBI. We know that's true. He said spying took place. He said it twice. He said there's a basis for his concern about the spying that occurred. Right. And finally, the two terms he used, I said this last week in the committee hearing. He used two terms that should scare every single American. He said uh, unauthorized surveillance Mm. and political surveillance. Elected official Jim Jordan on top of the boomerang, Operation Boomerang, on top of the spy gate, all the details and all the information. He's been privy to all of this all along. He knows Joe DeGeneva has been plugged into this all along as well. And the takeaways from those two uh, right now, today, folks, the takeaways from those two right now. First off, Joe DeGeneva believes that they're going to jail. Somebody's going to prison. That's first takeaway. And the second takeaway, he said that Durham has been working on this already for two months. Durham has already been working on this for two months now. Durham also has the ability to, I I believe I was being told, has the ability to prosecute as well. So you heard uh, Brennan, a little nervous, trying to spin it. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to how they're talking. Listen to the left and what they're saying. And then listen to the right and what we know to be fact. You can clearly see this. I've never been able to see the clear-cut lies of the Democrats and the mainstream media like we can see here on display right now. And this from John Solomon at J. Solomon Reports. State Department's red flag on steel went to a senior FBI man well before the FISA warrants and the article at thehill.com. So what had happened is that somebody in the the DOJ uh, flagged the dossier as being fake. Weeks, weeks before the FISA warrant. It went all the way up to the head. They knew that it was fake. They were told it was fake. It was flagged red. It, It was not verified and salacious. This information that's coming out, the journalists are reporting on, Imagine what Bill Barr, imagine what Durham is going to uncover. Imagine all the stuff that's going to come out. Um, these Democrats have literally sunk themselves uh, to the lowest of possible lows. And this at Megavolts 001, an absolute follow. Lots of great uh, tweets and lots of great information uh, from him. Hashtag Barr, hashtag Dems, hashtag Spygate. XDOJ official. Democrats should be quite worried about the latest investigations of the investigators. If I were the Democrats, I would be quite worried. Former Deputy Assistant Attorney General John Wu told Fox News. If I were the Democrats, I would be quite worried. And the reason why is by appointing a U.S. attorney, Attorney General Barr is essentially signaling that he thinks it's possible that criminal violations occurred in the start of the whole investigation into any kind of any kind of Trump Russia collusion. Uh, as Judge Starr said, there's already an Inspector General investigation going on that's going to come to a conclusion. That's what you would do if you were just interested in reforming uh, the way the department does things, the way decisions were made. But you wouldn't go with a U.S. attorney like Durham, so someone of his stature, unless the Attorney General thinks 
actually something criminal might have happened, that someone might have violated the law, that there might have been malfeasance, that people uh, at the FBI or the Justice Department were acting out of partisan motives, not just out of incompetence or stupidity, or they were duped by the Russians or Steele or the English or by the Clinton campaign. So if you were a Democrat, I think you would be really worried to see the appointment of a career prosecutor like this. And we went over the details yesterday of the career prosecutor that Durham truly is. Durham's the guy that goes out and gets the bad guys that are in the deep state, that are career officials, that are in law enforcement, the FBI, DOJ, the DOD, uh, uh, federal law enforcement, local law enforcement. Durham has made a career after going by uh, going after these criminals that are embedded in our government uh yeah the democrats are scared to death this by tom fitton at tom fitton coup update who needs to be investigated on the spy gate and other abuses targeting real donald j trump partial list obama biden susan rice hillary clinton dnc brennan clapper comey mccabe lynch Page struck Yates, Mueller, and Weissman. The Mueller investigation failed to find any evidence to support the big lie that the Trump campaign colluded with the Russians, and it failed miserably to prove any obstruction. It's all just gossip suggesting the president was doing something wrong. It was an attack on the president for exercising his powers of president as president. The Justice Department and I mean, at least the Mueller operation suggests that every hiring and firing decision by the president can be subject to Justice Department review. They've placed themselves above the president of the United States. I've told you before, it's King Mueller at the Justice Department. 200 pages of non-collusion. And it shows you they never had a good faith basis. The dossier wasn't a good faith basis. It's still two years later, three years later, unverified. And it was the fundamental basis for the FISA warrants. Carter Page, he didn't do anything wrong. You would have thought he was a Russian agent. George Papadopoulos, not a Russian agent. They knew that immediately. And when they suggested Carter Page was an agent, they were lying to the court because they all knew he was not an agent. Exactly. We've been preaching this to the choir for years now. Uh, we're going on two and a half years, but I wanted to play that clip because I wanted you to see juxtapose, juxtapose. Let's get into the leftists and let's look at, um, let's go to Brennan first. Let's go to Brennan first. I want you to see how Brennan is doing and his voice and what he's, uh, he's thinking right now. This act, Diane Long, 22, a good one to follow as well. Nervous John, ex-CIA John Brennan lashes out at Lindsey Graham, begs officials to shun political expedience and do what is right by the Gateway Pundit. And this takes us over to John Brennan's tweet. He tweets out at John Brennan. Senator Graham and his ilk bear responsibility for damage being done to our nation, national interests at home and abroad by acquiescing to Mr. Trump's incompetence, corruption, and malevolence. Who will shun political expedience and do what is right? Who among you is wise and understanding? What? <laughs> What are you talking about, man? Corruption? That would be you, the head of the CIA, my man. That would be you. Total corruption. John Brennan is going down. James Comey is going down. Uh, and the two of them are going back and back and blaming each other. You got Clapper blaming uh, uh, Comey as well. And then you got Ro Rod Rosenstein. He got away with murder. This guy's getting away clean. Wow. Rosenstein, a professional... Uh, uh, you put the expletive in there. Uh, he, he blamed Comey too. Uh, I think they're all coming out with the long knives from Comey because he's an easy hit. And, uh, likewise, look at him. He's a dope. He goes out there. And he can't stop talking himself. And this at Nick Guitar 1776, Rachel Mad Cow freaks out over the appointment of John Durham. Mad Cow claims that President Trump is demanding investigations of his political enemies. Remember, we've got the 
Judiciary Committee in the Senate, led by Lindsey Graham, who now says what he's going to investigate is the start of the Russia investigation and maybe Hillary Clinton's emails. We've got Jeff Sessions having already appointed a U.S. attorney named Huber in Utah to look at the origins of the Russia investigation. We've got the inspector general at the Justice Department looking at the origins of that investigation. And now Attorney General Barr, fresh off of pounding his chest in Congress and saying, we need to stop using the Justice Department for political purposes. Purposes. Now, he, too, has appointed somebody else, yet another U.S. attorney, to look into the origins of that investigation. Meanwhile, we have no idea what the results were of that investigation. We'd have no idea what the findings were of the counterintelligence investigation into Russia and its potential links with the Trump campaign. None of that ended up in Mueller's report. Um, but this, this whole idea that the president's going to demand, to demand investigations of the investigators, demand investigations of his political enemies... <laughs> Oh, she can't handle herself. She's beside herself. Operation Boomerang's what's it called? Yes, Operation Boomerang. Uh, no, Rachel Madcow. Yeah, I'm sorry, ma'am. I am so sorry. That ain't going to work. Uh, that doesn't work for none of us. And I'm telling you right now, we know the fact. We know the truth. And we also know, don't tell me there wasn't no there there. In the Mueller report, 448 pages, no collusion with anyone in the Trump campaign with Russia. No collusion, no obstruction. There was nothing there to charge. If there was something there, it would be charged. You don't, uh, when you go and investigate somebody, you're investigating and then you charge them and you charge them with a crime. Then that goes to court and that plays out in the battlefield. There wasn't nothing to charge with, which means it's over. So sorry. So sad. And responding to sad John Brennan's tweet, I had to pick this one out. This is too funny, guys. And this, at the last refugee two, Trey Gowdy discusses Barr, Durham, Steele dossier, and Brennan versus Comey. Uh, December of 2016. December you know, over the weekend, Senator Graham was uh, really, really um, exercised over the lack of corroboration of this dossier that was used in court filings. So the question then b- becomes, was it unverified, uncorroborated when you used it? And then when did you begin to corroborate it? And, and what I'm telling Mr. Durham or whoever is going to look into this, I think you'll see late in 2016, well after it had been used, it was still unverified, and the people responsible for it were referring to it as unverified. And one or the other demanded that it be included in the intelligence assessment, which then leaked, which then prompted the discussion you and I are having now. Yeah. Public. I think uh, that it's one more place for Mr. Durham to start. That's a pretty easy thing to sort out. Who insisted that the uh, dossier or the unverified material from Chris Steele be included? But Martha, sometimes when you have two people, I can tell you, having been in a courtroom, sometimes when two people are blaming each other, they're both right. It's both of them. Um, and I think it's interesting that Brennan and Comey right now, the only thing they seem to share is a hatred for Donald Trump. It's going to be interesting if they begin to turn on one another. I've seen the document. I'm not going to describe it any more than that. Um, Comey's got a better <laughs> argument than Brennan based on what I've seen. Wow. Oh, oh, breaking news. James Comey's got a better angle, a better story than Brennan. Breaking news from someone who has seen the documents. Uh, Brennan, this is not looking good, man. This is looking worse and worse every minute of the day. And again, James Clapper is also out uh, talking smack as well. So we got Clapper, Brennan, uh, uh, Comey all eating each other apart. And according to, you just heard it right there, to Trey Gowdy, who has seen the documents, uh, Comey's got a better argument than uh, Brennan. But uh, as he said in court, when two people are going at each other, usually they're both guilty. We're kind of losing sight of what was uh, the cause of all this, the predicate for all this, was the Russians and the Russian engagement. Uh, and now we know with uh, apparently dozens of cases where Russian operatives, some of whom were known to be have intelligence connections, were trying to engage with the Trump campaign. That's what uh, the concern was and was a predicate for for any of these investi- this investigation. I wish people paid more attention to volume one of the Mueller report, the exhaustive detail about what the Russians did. And we're losing sight of that. No, we're not losing sight of what the Russians did. We know exactly what the Russians did. The Russians colluded with Hillary Clinton, the DNC. 
Uh, Christopher Steele, they also were colluding with uh, the Ukraine, putting things together with the uh, government, the Ukrainian officials, and uh, literally pulling the strings in the Ukraine. Such uh, uh, really, really bad stuff that was going on during the election. And now we've got... uh, it's kind of frustrating, folks. The whole thing with uh, uh, Don Jr. Remember how they said that they subpoenaed it? Republican let subpoenas Don Jr. Well, apparently Don Jr. has reached a deal that will that he will testify. He's reached a deal to uh, satisfy the Senate Intel Committee. He testified for five hours. Now you want him to come back for for what? For, for what? Um, Mueller just said there's no there there, and yeah. It's all about harassment. Said I was going to move quick, folks. I don't have much time to get all this out. It's incredible information coming out today. Ness at Carmine Sabia. Great information to follow, follow, follow. It was hashtag Bill Barr resign. Now it's hashtag Lindsey Graham resign. No one is resigning because you're a whiny little bee. And this at F-U-C-T up Mike. The Obama administration spied on candidate Trump. Was it legal? We'll find out who unmasked, who spied, who bribed. The biggest question is, who was the single person that started this all? One person started this, and the rest created a plan. Who was it? (laughs) I can't get enough of that. HRC tripping, falling down in that aircraft. That's just too good. Here's the deal, folks. We've got the emails. WikiLeaks has exposed this uh, and who the one single person is. The one single initial person that we have found with the emails is John Podesta. John Podesta emailing out. He was caught in a phishing scam, uh, P-H-I-S, uh, phishing scam, where he gave uh, his new password to the guys who were hacking into his account. What an idiot. So anyway, so they watched his account. Not only that, but the Chinese had a, a bug in Hillary Clinton's email server that carbon copied them every single time she sent or received an email. So China had everything. But what we're seeing now is the original idea came from John Podesta to go ahead and start with the Russia, 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 knowing, knowing that the people in place and the deep state, everybody from Sally Yates at Attorney General to Barack Obama and we've seen now James Clapper, James Comey, uh, Brennan, all of them. John Podesta knew they were all good. Loretta Lynch, he knew they were all good because they're part of the crew. He could have just picked up the phone and talked to them. That's how awful this was. And one last thing to make your blood boil before we get to some good news. This this going to wreck it, man. <laughs> we'll get to some good news. We'll make you happy here in the end. At Tombstone Bub, Slush fund is found. Obama's dirty tricks stealing our money is coming to light more and more and more. Hashtag tornado Trump. Yeah, folks, they absolutely did. It was like as if the um, the GOP, or not the GOP, but, but the Republican-run the Department of Defense went ahead and gave hundreds of millions of dollars to the NRA or hundreds of millions of dollars to pro-life organizations. That's exactly what happened. They're finding that during the Obama administration, these wretched, awful left-wing uh, arms of the Democrat Party were just rained down, showered with hundreds of millions of dollars illegally because that money shouldn't have been uh, been spent like that. Okay, let's get to some good news. Let's wrap this up for the day with some happy stuff. Donald Trump rally, rock and roll. Donald Trump rock and rolling. Rally underway. Donald Trump tweets this out. The golden era of American... The golden era of American energy is now underway. It's great to be here with the incredible men and women who are making America into the energy superpower of the world. And today we celebrate the amazing workers at Sempra Energy as you open the Cameron LNG export facility. The previous administration tried to put America's vast energy resources under lock and key. Under my administration, we have ended the war on American energy and we have ended the economic assault on our wonderful energy workers. You are powering our cities, uplifting our nation, and you are lighting up the world 
You're building a better future for our families and for our children. And I want to congratulate the workers because ultimately it doesn't work without the workers. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you. It's great to be here with the incredible men and women who are making America into the energy superpower of the world. We've just gone to number one not so long ago. A few months ago, this was not going to happen with somebody else in office, that I can tell you. I was saying things that took 25 years before they got disapproved. In other words, they'd work on them for 20, 25 years, and then they wouldn't get approved. We're getting them done in less than a year. <laughs> And if they're not good for the environment, they won't get approved. They won't get approved. But at least you'll know one way or the other. We're getting them done quickly or we're letting them know they don't work. But we're finding that most of them do. Most of them do. And today we celebrate the amazing workers at Sempra Energy as you open the Cameron LNG Export Facility for Business. I've never seen a thing like this in my life. This is incredible. This is incredible. And knowing the group very well that did it, they have two more phases that they're probably going to be starting pretty soon. I know I shouldn't say that, Jeff, but that's the way it is. <laughs> From right here in Hackberry, Louisiana, you will very soon be exporting clean American natural gas all over the globe with the incredible grit, skill, and pride. The 7,000 workers at this facility are helping lead the American energy revolution. That's what it is. Number one in the world, not even close. And, you know, I just approved a lot of pipelines going through Texas and other places, including, as you know, the Keystone XL pipeline I approved. At V underscore Ashley, Trump mocking the Democrat hopefuls running for president of the United States. The way we want it, and I think we're going to win it big. I'm looking at the competition. You sort of dream about competition like that, but who knows? Who knows? I got boot edge edge. I got them all. I got Beto. Beto. Beto's falling fast. What the hell happened? Remember about four, four weeks ago, he said, I was made for this. He was made for it. He was made to fall like a rock. He, what happened to him? But he's trying to restart his campaign. That generally doesn't work out too well. Political geniuses, when you have to restart your campaign, history has said that that does not work out well, right? History has said that that's trouble, but he's going to restart his campaign. But I'm looking at it. I don't know what the hell happened to Biden. What happened to him? I'm looking. I said, that doesn't look like the guy I knew. What happened to him? And Bernie, you know, Bernie's crazy. <laughs> Bernie's crazy. But Bernie's got a lot more energy than Biden. So you never know. No, no. Bernie's got a lot of energy, but it's energy to get rid of your jobs. He's got the opposite energy that you produce. Not good energy. You don't like his energy, but, you know, so it's going to be one of these people. Uh, Pocahontas, I think, is probably out. <laughs> Boy, you got some beauties there. 350 million people, and that's the best we can do. <laughs> I don't think so. Even as Democrats, I could pick better than that. This at RN underscore JB7, not a single hashtag damn presidential candidate, even with their Hollywood puppets, could attract a crowd this size and, and we got to leave the sound turned off because copyrighted material. I get myself in trouble. But for those of you watching at real MAGA, Steve put this up for us. These are the ones to follow folks. 12 and a half thousand Trump supporters cheering the greatest president of our lifetime. And this at just lucky 190 Trump fan, Sherry, how big is the Trump rally? Keeps telling us how many people showed up, but we never get to see them because the fake news doesn't want us to know. And this is a little late. Uh, this is for Mother's Day. We're still on the Mother's Day week, if you will. This at our good friend at R-O-H-L-L-5 Arena. Little message for all MAGA patriots. I wanted to uh, reach out to everyone and uh, just wish everyone that is a mom a happy Mother's Day on Sunday. Um, if your mom has passed on and she's in heaven, my mom's in heaven, um, just wanted to send a little extra love to those who don't have their mom. So anyways, I hope your Friday is fabulous and um, you have a great weekend. So sending you extra 
cool, fantastic vibes. So, yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Now that's, a, that's Trump supporters. Look at that. These are Trump supporters. Peaceful, loving, caring, emotional, sending out love. Folks, for truly, for truly, this is the party of love and not the party of hate and anger, which is, uh, you heard Trump. Now let's jump back over. Let's Mad Maxine wrap this thing up. Our good buddy, uh, <laughs> Terrence Williams, uh, looks like he's doing nice and healthy at Kim Freethinker. And I resent the remark about making America great again. He's down here making a speech for this dishonorable president of the United States of America. Having said that, I reserve the balance of my time. And no, I do not yield not one second to you. Not one second. Not one second. (laughs) Girl, Bob, Maxine, you need to go to bed. You need to check your sugar and go to bed. Thank you, Terrence. We are so glad to have you back on the MAGA trail. Folks, this is going to be incredible. Enjoying life as we see it now. Good things are to come. We've got, we're pushing away from abortion, pushing into pro life. We're ushering in a a whole new era. Continue to talk about Christ. Continue to talk about Christianity. Continue to open up your arms and preach about love and acceptance for all uh, Christians. So we have a lot of, of gay friends. We have a lot of black friends. We have a lot of white. We have all kinds of colored friends. We have all kinds of people that have been, uh, that have had m- many problems in the past, uh, former drug addicts, former uh, uh, alcoholics, everything. It does not matter. It's because the church, the Christian church is the church that is to heal for the soul. It's a hospital for your soul, folks. So invite people to church, reach out and help people up, talk to people, uh, just be a good friend to people. And then in the end, uh, you can let them know uh, one way or another uh, your Christian uh, background and who you are. And they'll be able to see Christianity in a different light uh, versus all the hate and the anger and the fake news that everybody preaches about Christians, which is absolutely not true. Anyways, with that being said, folks, oh my goodness, what a how fastest hour you're going to spend anywhere with anybody. New Right Network's original series, Smith TV, your host, Brian Smith. Crush the like, crush the share. Jump over to smith.com, check it out. Uh, we've got the shop over there. You can listen to audio only. We've got everything over there. And, uh, and our new handle as well, at Smith Television on Twitter. That's right there in the description below. Have a good evening for Wednesday Wisdom and Wednesday uh, Wednesday Wisdom. You've been listening to New Right Network, mobilizing, countering, energizing. Online at newrightnetwork.com. <laughs>